How do you feel about Microsoft and what they did now, years later? Screw those bastards! <laughs> Tell us how you really feel about Microsoft, Ben. Well, they almost killed Netscape. So, uh, interesting, they certainly eliminated Netscape's browser business. I mean, what Netscape represents to me was um, sort of the pioneer of the internet. Going after um, not only creating the first approach to the browser and the infrastructure to actually explore the web, but also commercialize the web. Yahoo, you know, really was built, among others, was really built on the back of Netscape. There would be no Yahoo without, without Netscape, and there would be no Google without Yahoo, and probably would be, well, we can carry on with that. Netscape was led by a three-person dream team. Crazy serial entrepreneur Jim Clark, polished and professional CEO Jim Barksdale, and a brash 20-something kid from the Midwest named Mark Andreessen. It was a powerful yet volatile cocktail. We planned this massive launch in New York City with like, you know, on stage and, you know, big lights and all these things and everybody from the press was coming and it was going to be awesome. And two weeks before the launch, um, Mark leaks the entire strategy and the entire story to, you know, not the Wall Street Journal, not the New York Times, but computer reseller news. <laughs> uh, which was the best of the computer reseller news VAR magazines, you know. <laughs> but it was, you know, CRN, and the reporter was very good, and he got the whole story out of Mark, like the pricing, the, you know, all the components, it was going to take on back office. And I was so upset, and so I sent him an email, I'm like, I guess we're not going to wait for the launch, you know, <laughs> that was just one line email. And he replies and you know CC Mike Homer who was my boss uh, Jim Barksdale who was the CEO and Jim Clark <laughs> who was the uh, volatile founder um, and the his email said and I, I don't remember it exactly but I remember a lot of it he said well I guess you really don't understand what's going on we're getting killed 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 and losing billions of dollars in value every day because server product management, which is basically me, has no idea what they're doing. Next time, do the fucking interview yourself. Fuck you, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> and I got that email on the day he was on the cover of Time magazine. <laughs> Despite the turmoil, America's fascination with what the Netscape browser could unlock, a whole new world of e-commerce and information, pushed the young 18-month-old company towards a tumultuous IPO that would forever change Silicon Valley. But something else factored into the timing as well. Is it true the main reason you went public then was because Jim Clark wanted to buy a boat? Uh, that, had, that, that, that did factor into it. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, the that's great Jim. escape moment we all hear about was simply because of a boat. Yeah. But to Jim's credit, it turned out to be a good idea. <laughs> but if you hold, held your Netscape stock that you bought at any time through to the acquisition by Time Warner, uh, the ultimate value of the enterprise was $14 billion. So you made really good money <clears throat> in staying with it. And it was a, a, you know, a seminal company. It made a big difference. Was it the IPO that was iconic? Was it what it did for technology? Was it something about how it reshaped what it was to be an internet startup. What was so different about it? God, you should answer this question. It's all those things you cited. It's really <laughs> very true. This was the company, that, you know, here we are, it's, it's not even 20 years later, that took the internet from something that was used basically by physicists into something that every woman and man could use. This whole like point and click idea that the pictures would get you to all the world's information. That's a powerful paradigm shift. That's a really very big deal. Talk about, the, since you were on the analyst side, the impact that Netscape had on the markets. Because um, everybody, you know, talks about that IPO and, and how much it transformed things and, you know, yep. Mark being barefoot on the cover of Time Magazine and all that. Yep. Um, yep. What, was it just the, the, the surprising power of the retail investor? Was that what that was all about? Was it something else? Where do you think that sort of changed going public as a startup? Well, I mean, I think that um, I think that Netscape was 
Uh, certainly for Hambrecht and Quist, which was a boutique investment bank that was built on the back of investing in Apple, Genentech, and Adobe. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally, Apple, Genentech, and Adobe were Bill Hambrecht's investments. I mean, hello. It's uh, a nice portfolio. And then, and then decided to actually, well, maybe I won't be able to do this again, so I should build an investment bank um, <laughs> to make sure I can pay the bills and continue to invest. And then he ends up investing um, in a, a bunch of other great companies. Uh, for H&Q, um, you know, Netscape was a transformational moment where um, you had this small boutique bank focused here specializing in technology that was on the cover of what was the most sought after, most interesting and important technology company that didn't have profits at the time, had pretty limited revenue, but had a very, very high growth rate. And there was so much pent up demand for buying the stock. Forget about the retail interest but actually the institutional interest, the fidelities and the T. Rowe prices of the world wanting to back the truck in this new trend that um, it was actually one of the riskiest moments in the history of, of the bank where, um, I'll never forget this, the day, so first of all, I was priced at 14 uh, at the, or on the cut, on the, the, the range was 10 to 12. It was priced at 14. The f but ended up, I think, no, 28 was the final price. Um, I think the first trade was at 45 or something. I keep on looking at Quincy because I figured he'd remember that. <laughs> okay, 45, and then, it, and then it shot to 81. And I'll never forget that at H&Q, basically none of the traders were allowed to trade the stock other than the lead trader because we were so scared of how this stock was going to, what the gyrations would be. Mm -hmm. And so all he was trying to do was to match, we didn't want to have a position in Netscape because it could actually crush the bank. So it was all about just managing the trades, the sell and the buy. And I think the Morgan Stanley guy actually took a, took a position and ended up getting fired. I think he shorted <laughs> it all the way up. In, in all fairness, <laughs> poor, poor guy. I mean, in all, it was not obvious at the time. Uh -huh. But Netscape was really, a, a transformational point for, um, for the industry. Mm -hmm. And after that, the Yahoo's, the Amazon's, the Ebay's, every other company traded very similarly to Netscape and sort of momentum was built into the whole trading of, of these stocks and was expected. Mm -hmm. And then the retail, the t retail angle also fell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's so, it must be, have been cool to be a part of that. I think it's, it's just, cool. when you look back even in like 50 year history of Silicon Valley, like that IPO will always be one of the most iconic things that's gotten us here. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and uh, you know, it was so difficult to explain the story. Like you're really, you're just talking about a browser for God's sakes.